what you should be doing now. Food storage, water storage, a bunch of different things. That's what we're talking about in this video. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. And that is the topic of the day. I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of things that we store for food storage. Um, some water storage, potable and non-potable, which means drinkable and non-drinkable. And I'm going to talk about a bunch of other things, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's start the video with food storage. But before we go there, if you like the channel, enjoy the content, please subscribe. Please make sure you stay subscribed. You will get unsubscribed. It happens all the time. The algorithm, shadow banning, censorship, all that kind of stuff. Also, share the links in the description. Patreon, Amazon Storefront, those kind of things. Um, shout out to all those awesome people. You guys know who you are, who have been really helping out the channel. <clears throat> Thank you. You're truly a blessing. Please share the videos and help grow the community. Let's move on with food storage. Okay, so what are some things we stockpile, we store, we have for food storage? We have a lot of variety, a lot of different things. But I got here, uh, you can see on the table beside me, a bunch of stuff and some buckets here and some things I'm just going to show you. Some examples. Um, first off, I guess I'll grab the salt because, you know, salt. We need salt in our diet. Iodized salt because we need the iodine. You can get regular non-iodized salt also. You can have both in your food storage. But make sure you have plenty of salt. Uh, I know you only need a tiny bit of salt a day, sodium a day, to survive. But what about salting meats? That takes a lot of salt for long-term storage, if we're in a grid-down situation, different things like that. So have a lot of salt. It's good. It'll do you right. And then I'll just place them here in this little box down here. All right, what's the next one? We got chili with beans. Really good. This is awesome because even with a top like that, pop it open eat it right out of the can. You don't even need a spoon or a fork, really. You could just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, you can pop the can and eat it right out of the can. You don't have to cook it, uh, or you can take the label off. You can use the, uh, the tin can as a heating source on a little burner, on a, on a um, campfire, whatever the situation may be. But we love chili. I mean, who doesn't like chili with beans, right? Um, <clears throat> what's the next thing? And these are just random order. I'm just going to grab them off the table here. Not in any particular order, but black beans. Black beans, yep. Um, and the great value, I know, I don't really like Walmart either, but inexpensive. Good value. Good price. Great value, they might say. <laughs> no, seriously. Black beans. That's a really uh, good source. What else we got here? Chicken noodle condensed soup because you can eat it like right out of the can or you can use it, um, mix it in with a bunch of stuff, use it kind of like the sauce, um, those kind of things. What's next? What's next? We got here tomato sauce. Yep, for spaghetti, for making different dishes, you know, whatever you want to use it for. It's good, it adds flavor to things, and it helps you create a sauce, which is really nice. All right, next, oh yeah, I like these. Chili beans. They already have like seasoning in them, stuff like that. Actually, they have, uh, Salt, chili powder, garlic powder, oregano, cumin, um, that kind of stuff. So really good. We like these. Um, it's really quick and easy and uh, makes it, you know, preparing a meal easier. And, yeah, pop it open, eat it right out of the can. Another example of some beans, some red beans. I like having variety, especially variety in color, because variety in color means all different kinds of nutrients, micronutrients and macronutrients. So, yeah, have a variety, but red beans. Okay, so moving on, we got cannelli beans. Cannelli beans are really good. Uh, they're a white bean. And like I was talking about, the colors. Lots of colors, variety, pop top. Eat them right out of the can. This can be used as a ration, which is quick food that doesn't need preparation to eat, which is really good to have variety. I'll show you other stuff that does require cooking, but it's good to have things that you can eat right out of the can and things that need preparation. It's good to have variety. Uh, makes things a lot easier sometimes for you. All right, and we got here chicken and rice. Love this stuff. This is, uh, you know, it says there's like, uh, what, six servings at 70 calories? Come on. <laughs> one of these would be a meal for one person. It says family size, but it's not family size. Uh, not for me. I'll eat the whole can. But anyway, it's good. It's really good to mix with stuff. We love, you know, chicken and rice soup. It's good. 
uh, lots of different variety for cooking, adding flavor to things, those kind of things. Then we got, we're on to Kirkland now, which is Costco. Roast beef, canned roast beef, good, yummy, yum, 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 yum. Eat that all the time. Uh, and prep what you eat, obviously. That's really important. All right, on to a family favorite. Who doesn't like macaroni and cheese? Come on. We love this stuff. The premium shells and cheese. The great value brand we found to be better than the Kraft or any other brand. We like this. This is our favorite. The other brands seem to be more salty and less cheesy. This is cheesy. We love this stuff. They used to make family size ones of them. We love those, but all I've seen lately is this, uh, you know, like a, just the original size. So this we love. This is a big morale food for my family. That would get us back into the spirits, you know, spirit of things. So macaroni and cheese is really good. Uh, another thing that's really good is a prepper to prep. Very, very good, calorie dense, and yummy, easy, can fit the, fill, the, um, fill the role of ration also, is peanut butter. This is chunky peanut butter. We like smooth peanut butter. We like Jif, we like Skippy, we like all natural, whatever. Um, don't really care. Peanut butter is just good. I actually have a 35 pound pail of peanut butter I've shown on video before. That's pretty sweet. But anyway, peanut butter is a really good thing to have in your preps. And to go along with peanut butter, they say that things in twos, kind of like chocolate and peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly, right? Yeah, this is Marionberry fruit spread. There you go. Oh man, I love it. Marionberry is really good. No, nowhere near as homemade, good as homemade, but you know, this stuff's pretty good. So that's another aspect of it. So let's go over the last couple small cans. We got great value beef stew because yum and you can mix it in with a bunch of stuff. Help stuff go further. Help stuff taste better. Mix this in with beans and rice and bam it's a lot better. It's just it tastes better. It's, uh, it gives you variety. Gives you that flavor you want. Um, and then what else we got here? Protein is very important for preppers as well as you know fat and carbs. Carbs are so easy to get though. Um, but we really like this, the chunk chicken breast. Uh, you know, there's four can, it's like the value pack. Well, the great value pack. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, this is with rib meat and water, fully cooked, same kind of thing, pop top. You can just throw this in your patrol pack, bug out bag, whatever, pop it open and eat it right out of the can. Um, make sure you rotate your stuff though, of course. So those are the last two small cans. On with the big stuff. Top ramen because it's cheap. A lot of preppers, this is like the cornerstone of their preps. Not a good idea. This stuff goes rancid, goes stale. Uh, you want to, the flavor packs are really good though for a long, longer period of time normally than the noodles are. And hey, if something's a little bit stale, a little bit rancid, I'd still eat it if I had to keep me alive. Uh, but it's all carbs. It's, you know, it's not a bunch of good stuff, but it is inexpensive. And you can have this as part of your preps. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with having top ramen as part of your preps. Just don't make it the cornerstone of your food. <laughs> you know, you need more than just top ramen to live. Um, unless you're, you know, a college bachelor in the dorm, dorm room, you know. Uh, I've lived off top ramen before. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's healthy though at all. So that's a good one. Okay, and we like having the bulk items, right? Beans. This is just a bag of beans that I, you know, made smaller bags out of a bigger bag and they're en route to proper long-term storage or this may just go in the pantry for use. I don't know yet. I'll have to ask Mrs. AP what the plans are for this. But these are just pinto beans. Um, you know what's cool though? This is about eight pounds. This is uh, eight pounds of seeds also, which is really good for planting. Some people say you can't plant these because they won't reproduce true to form. I don't know. I've planted them a lot of times and gotten great results. So I'm not saying year after year after year, you may not want to save the seeds from them, but once you harvest them, you'll get at least one harvest from what I've found. So it may be different from you, but I've had good luck with this. That's a lot of seeds. Um, along with that dry goods and seeds is corn. This is just dried corn. Uh, I, I forget what this is, uh, this particular bag. This was in the pantry, so this will probably be, we'll probably grind this up and make some cornbread out of it or something like that, because uh, I think it's more like a, like a field corn or something. Um, it's not a sweet corn, but it's good to have in your preps, and you can make stuff like that out of it. You know, make cornbread, make tortillas, 
make a lot of different stuff, or you can just eat it like this. Um, well, not like this, but cook it up, eat it. It's not as sweet, not as yummy as sweet corn, but hey, it'll help keep you alive. Um, and people talk about nixtamalization. Yes, that's a thing if the, if the majority of your diet comes from corn. But the fact is, for Americans and our environment and stuff like that, we're probably not going to receive the majority of our calories from corn. But learn about it. It's a good process. There's some good videos out there. Um, Arkansas Preparedness Network. A long time ago, I saw one of his videos on it. He did a video on nixtamalization. It was very good. So check that out. So, from our local restaurant supply store, which is an awesome source of prepping, of getting preps, and big cans, peaches, sliced peaches, really good, yummy, kids love them, um, big can of them. And a lot of people are like, okay, well, big can sucks because when you open it, then you got to do something with the rest of them. Okay, well, I have four people in my immediate family, plus another four people in a slightly extended family in the local area. So that's eight people, plus MAG members, team members, neighbors, all this kind of stuff like that. So yeah, if we open this, we're gonna eat it in plenty of time. So it may be a concern for you having big cans, but for us, it's not. So we really love these and it's an inexpensive way to get a bunch of food. Along with that, this one we actually got at Walmart. It was a brand that I hadn't seen before. It was during the whole COVID thing. There's a lot of more different brands and stuff we hadn't seen on the shelves before, but it's whole corn, whole kernel corn. Um, good way to get corn, right? And the water inside here is water. You can just drink it. Um, help you get some water. Uh, well, there's some sugar and salt in it, of course, also because they put sugar and salt in everything. But yeah, corn, corn is good. What's another one? Back to stuff from our restaurant supply store. A big, huge can of corned beef hash. Yum. This is a really good source of protein, and it's an inexpensive way to buy this. It is 510 calories and 12 servings in here. So you're talking 6,000 calories, which is, that's pretty good. You know, like I said, and if we open this, we'll eat it. So yeah, it's an option for us. It may not be for you. Everybody's different. So keep that in mind. More stuff from the restaurant supply store. Black beans, First Street, this is like their, their store brand type thing. Um, but black beans, yeah, big, number 10 can. This is uh, uh, six pounds, 12 ounces. So almost seven pounds of black beans. And, you know, water and probably um, sugar, salt, of course. But hey, good. Good prep of food right there. And along with that, we got some kidney beans. Same thing. Really good. Uh, big can. Yeah, I get it. But yeah, so and then the last thing I'm going to show you from the restaurant supply store is pancake and waffle syrup. Yeah, that's a big thing. Are we going to eat this all if we open it? No, we won't. But we, there's other methods. You can keep it. And syrup? Come on. I, I don't know about you, but I don't think this is going to go bad really necessarily. I don't know. We'd have to see, I guess. But it's a big thing. It's inexpensive to get. We could probably make up other foods with it and then, you know, I don't know, freeze them. Whatever the situation is, we would definitely make use of this. But inexpensive way to get a bunch of um, sweet things for morale, you know, because we want to stuff in your pancakes, waffles, whatever it may be. Pancake mix. That's something I'm actually not showing in this video physically. But pancake mix, we love pancake mix. That's such a good thing to store in your preps because you can make pancakes out of them. You can make waffles out of them. You can even add it to other stuff, make some bread out of sweet breads and stuff like that. It's very, very versatile. So with the variety and different kinds of food storage things, you know, long-term um, dry goods, canned goods, all those other kind of things, things like this, the Augustin Farms, they have a lot of freeze-dried options and stuff like that, but this is cheese blend powder, you can see right there. And this is uh, just over three pounds of cheese powder. Imagine how useful this would be in cooking. You can add this in anything. You can add this to your pasta to make uh, macaroni and cheese or spaghetti and cheese, whatever. You can add this to bread to make cheesy breads. You can add it to tortillas to make cheesy tortillas. You can add it to almost anything to get some extra flavor. Spices are very important. I'm actually not showing any spices in this video, but spices to flavor your foods are also very important. But this is one of those things that's it's just, come on, and you're looking for more calories? This is another way to get some more calories into your foods. Um, those 
vegetables that don't have many calories, pour some of that cheese spread over them. You know, reconstitute it, put in some water, cook it, make it up as cheese spread, put it over your vegetables. More calories because we'll need calories. Another thing along with that is butter powder. Same kind of thing. This is uh, two pounds, four ounces of butter powder. Uh, and, and along the same way, along the same lines. You can cook with it. You can add it to dishes. Um, lots of different uses. So many different uses for this. I like multi-use items. This can be used for so many different things in cooking and cooking in different, so many different things that it's very, very useful. Uh, so, yeah, just one sec and we'll get on to some water. Water is vital to life, right? So stockpiling water. How do you store water? There are so many different ways to store water. I would love to have a big 5,000 gallon tank. That would be awesome. Have it full of potable water to drink. Yeah, that would be awesome. But what do we do here? We're a little more realistic. We do things like this. Yeah, it's a milk jug. So is this potable water? No, don't use milk jugs for potable water. And because the plastic will break down quickly over time, it's not good for long-term storage. But we could use this as flushing water because we're on a well. All we gotta do is fill up the back, the reservoir for the toilet, and then flush and it'll continue to work. So this could be flushing water, this could be garden garden watering water, this could be washing yourself water, whatever. You may not, you don't drink this though, but it's one way to store water. Um, another way to store water is here. Is, I mean, it's an olive oil container and it's just full, you know, I rinse it out well, I sanitize it still, even though it's not, I don't count this as potable water, but flushing water and garden water. That's another thing you can use to store it in. Um, don't waste any containers because like you see this, this is laundry detergent. No, it's not laundry detergent. It's water, flushing water, gardening water, whatever. Use any kind of container. Uh, here's another example of a container. What is this? It's a cat litter um, container. And yeah, this is also not potable water, but it will store and it's a way to have water on hand. Okay, on to potable water. How do we store potable water? Well, there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways we store potable water. One of them is things like this. This is just a sparkling water bottle that I sanitize really well and fill back up with water. And that's potable water. As long as you keep it, sometimes you may want to refresh it every year, dump them out, add more water, stuff like that. But, or just keep the older ones for flushing water. Or just try to use this potable water. Same thing here, sparkling water bottle. You can use fruit juice bottles, um, soda bottles, all those kind of things also. Here's another way to store potable water in these things. As you can see, water bottle. These big water bottles. I like the ones these with a handle on them. That's pretty sweet. So this is, uh, what is this? This is five gallon water bottle. So it's a good way, you know, see it's all dusty and stuff like that from being, you know, carport, shed, wherever it was. I forget where I pulled it out of. But this is a good way to store pot of water. And these larger ones, I usually do that once a year. Um, before the rainy season ends, I will dump this all out and I will fill it, I will sanitize it and I will fill it with clean, fresh water before we enter our dry season, if Western Washington even has a dry season, which yeah, we do, people complain about the rain here, but between like uh, May to maybe October, it really doesn't rain that much here. It's very beautiful, very nice, um, great weather for growing, but anyway, so before the drier season comes, I will refresh these. So I'm getting ready to do that now. All right, another way to store potable water is these. You see these, Igloo, six gallon. These are really good, it's thin, you can see it right there. That is a good way to store potable water. Ah, I have no leverage because I'm sitting down. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's six gallons, that's five gallons, and then there's some of the smaller containers I show you to store water. That's very good. Um, what are some other things I want to show you? Actually, I wanted to show you this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. Let me take the camera off of the thing, and I will show you this. That is cornmeal powder. And then down here is some um, tomato powder. I hope you guys, hope you guys saw that label. Sorry about that. Let me put this back in my mount my tripod, but those are um, 40 pounds of cornmeal and I don't know how many pounds, I can't read the label down there, of the uh, tomato powder. But the tomato powder would be really good also for multi-use in your cooking. 
So those are the kind of things I look for, very important. This video is predominantly, primarily, food storage, water stuff. But, I'm not really gonna go into hygiene that much, but these things are really good to have. You know, personal wipes. Doesn't have to be this brand, but personal wipes. Um, anybody had a military shower before? Yeah, it's where you just take these things and you wipe yourself down because you don't have running water maybe. Or you may be in a location where you just, the option doesn't exist to take a shower, take a bath, whatever it may be. Um, so wiping down with these, oh yeah, these are a lifesaver in different situations. So personal wipes is something that's very good to add to your preps. Because um, hygiene is going to be very important in an SHGF scenario. Now I'm going to talk about some things that are hard to find in a lot of places. Some places you may have great availability of them still. In our area, all the stores almost are wiped out of this product and related products. What am I talking about? I'm talking about canning. These things, canning jars, canning jars, canning lids, um, the canning seals, all that stuff. All the canning related items, Anything having to do with canning, in most of our Walmarts, um, Targets, uh, Fred Meyers, um, even like Safeway, Kroger, you, know, you might know it as Kroger. We have Safeway and Albertsons here, but it's the same company. Um, man, they're wiped out. Finding these things, I, people, these things sell for, you know, like at Walmart, you could pick this up. It is a, what is it? Is it a, it's a 12 of the quart mason jars. So 12 of them for, I think it's like just over 10 bucks. I think it's under 11 bucks for 12 of them. So less than a dollar a piece. People are selling these on like uh, um, Craigslist and online marketplaces, Facebook marketplace, stuff like that, community pages for anywhere like 20, 30, 40 bucks. That's crazy. So anytime you see them, if you're in an area that you might need to get some of these or have lots of these, very, very important for storing your food storage. You also, your extra garden production. That's part of being self-reliant, self-sufficient type stuff. Learning to can, very important. And having the supplies to do so. You can get the re reusable like Tatler lids, um, but you can also get these kind of lids, usually very inexpensively in large quantities. And you don't necessarily have to get a, a bunch of the rings necessarily but you need to get the lids because the lids are not reusable, the rings are. And obviously the glass is, the bottles, the jars are. Um, but have canning supplies, very important. Also learn how to can. Also grow stuff so you do can and practice canning and do canning and add to your food storage, very important. So that's, that's that. All right, here we are at the end now. I hope you guys liked the video. I have a feeling it's probably going to be a longer video because we talked about a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff to prepping. There's a lot of stuff to have for your living insurance, which is what prepping is, right? I just encourage you guys to do these things, to have extra food on hand, to have extra water on hand, to have the basics down. Before you worry about moving on to all the fancy high-speed, low-drag prepper stuff <laughs> or being a master prepper, I'm not a master prepper. I'm just a guy doing the things, doing my best, and uh, trying to keep my family above water and ready for anything. So please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Please share the videos. I love you guys, and blessings to you and yours.